Doctors of Reddit. What is the most how the frick did that happen to you case you've seen? Not me but my best friend is a nurse. Said the worst thing she ever saw was a guy coming after a motorcycle wreck. He was still moving breathing etc in the ambulance but once he got to the air, they had to cut his helmet off. Apparently the helmet was the only thing keeping dude alive. Once his helmet came off his brains splattered everywhere and he was dead on the table. I guess that's why they're called brain buckets. Patient, a farmer, needed complete bed rest. He convinced me that he would rest at home so was discharged. Admitted two days later with a crushed foot. His explanation, a beast stood on it. He meant a cow. As someone whose entire extended family grew up farming, never trust a farmer to lie down and rest if they aren't either directly supervised or tied down to the bed. Grandma is currently on her fourth broken hip because she just will not stop climbing up on the nearest stool or chair or whatever. Every time she wants to reach something more than four feet off the ground. Not a doctor, but a witness to something. My family went to Disney World a few years ago and we met up with some family friends. On the Space Mountain ride, the husband raised his hands, his wedding ring got caught on something above him, and it ripped his finger almost completely off. It was hanging by a piece of skin. Thankfully he got into the air soon enough to save his finger, but he can't move it and doesn't have feeling in it. This is why I don't ever wear jewelry. Spent years as a marine aircraft mechanic and every 3 months they show you the same dang pictures of the same mishaps and remind you not to wear jewelry. I guess it took. Thanks for the reinforcement. There used to be a brand of vacuum cleaner looked like a sideways barrel on 4 wheels with a suction port on one end and an exhaust on the other. It was just the right height and circumference for doggy style non-organic humping. One year the new model comes out in the metal. High speed fan that provided the suction had been moved from the exhaust side to the suction side. That year a whole bunch of men appeared in us across the nation with the same story to explain penile lacerations. They were vacuuming in their bathrobe when somehow the robe opened and the penis got sucked into the vacuum. Not a doctor but a paramedic told me this one. Got a call to a house where a teenage boy had suffered a penis injury. Remember those glass stirring rods from science class? Kid took one home and put it down the eye of his penis. It broke. Shudder. My vagina just closed up in sympathy oh my god. God, so many. Not a doctor but a nurse practitioner in the air. Toy car in a condom in the butt. Giant pill bottle in the butt. The best is probably the guy who was being a good Samaritan and picking up the garbage bag in his neighbor's driveway and, sure enough, a needle slipped out and got lodged in his left AC. Our surgeon called him on his bulls, which was hilarious. S. H. User. Bulls. Really why can't people just get proper anal play toys? They're not that expensive. Ophthalmology here. I was called to the ED to examine a teenager for a gunshot to the eye. He heard a knock at the door, looked through the peephole and was shot directly in the eye. Unbelievably the bullet stayed within the orbit without penetrating the brain. So when I saw him his globe was ruptured. But he was playing a video game that I had to take away to examine him. My friend is a doctor and he once had a patient who accidentally shot his dong off because his gun went off in his pants. Still a third year med student, but my dad is a psychiatrist who used to work for the center for victims of torture. I knew it was a really bad day as a kid when he came home and just sat, watching us, crying. Ouch, this one hurt. I work at a hospital. And about a year ago, we had a guy come in that had injected car battery acid into his arms. The ED doc had no clue how to treat him. Not sure what ultimately happened to the dude. This is a repost but a goodie. This was about 10 years ago when I was a pediatrics resident. I had a patient from a juvenile detention center admitted for sudden inability to walk or stand. He started peeing brown and it was found he had rhabdomyolysis. Severe skeletal muscle breakdown that was threatening to shut down his kidneys. He had no idea how this happened and claimed he woke up and suddenly couldn't use his legs. The second night of his admission his mom and sister came to visit. His mom left, but his sister stayed the night in his room. The next morning, I go to his room on rounds to discover this dude boning his sister in his hospital bed. Keep in mind this is a children's hospital with butterflies on the walls and little kids being pulled in wagons by their parents down the hallways. Needless to say, all heck broke loose and the truth came out. 
This sister was actually his girlfriend who was implicated in his weapons and drug charges and who he was forbidden by the court to have contact with. The cops came and dragged her away while she screamed and cussed us all out. Stunned parents of other patients looked on in horror. The guy's rhabdo eventually cleared and he didn't need to go on dialysis. He started to regain strength in his legs. Before discharge, he finally admitted what triggered the muscle breakdown and his leg weakness he did 1000 leg squats. All to get released from juvie and see his girlfriend. I presented the case at morning report the next day and called it the Sawshank Redemption. Not a doctor but a nurse. Patient had zero skin on his penis. Zero. It was nothing but the muscle. It's actually fascia not muscle. I was using muscle to help facilitate the image of what it looked like. I had to put special ointments and stuff on it. The reason being. Diabetes. Apparently his GF nicked him with a tooth during oral. Since diabetes creates delayed wound healing. It started becoming necrotic. But caught it early enough they could just remove the skin before it got into the deeper fascia and compartments of the penis. Otherwise dude Walder lost his junk. Not my patient. Other than fellow residents. He's presenting an admission from the previous night to the attending senior physician. A woman with some intellectual disabilities and some stereotyped behaviors. One of which was picking at her scalp. Her caregivers had been trying to take care of this but finally brought her in when they noticed that the hole was getting kind of deep. My co-resident was describing the physical exam and said something like there was a 3 cm defect in the scalp that appeared to be about 4-5 cm deep. The attending interrupted him at that point and said wait, it can't be that deep. She'd be right through her skull and into her brain at that point. The resident coughed, looked uncomfortable, and said yes, that's correct. Let's get to the head CT. Basically this poor woman had picked her scalp to the point where she'd gone right through the skull and started to pick at her brain. Had a healthy 20 something guy come in coughing up a ton of blood. And I mean a ton. Was in the IQ. Getting unit after unit of blood. Intubated and bronchoscopy. Put a camera down the trachea to look at lungs. Performed and what do they find? A thumbtack. They successfully remove the thumbtack and guy recovers. Breathing tube removed. So we ask the guy, how the heck a thumbtack got in his lung? Turns out when he was 8 or 9 he played a game with his nares where they would see who could hold the most thumbtacks in their mouth. He must have inhaled one but it didn't cause problems for 10 plus years. Then he got bronchitis and was coughing a lot and must have moved the tack and caused it to puncture his lung. A little late but here we go. Not happened to me but to a friend of mine who works as a nurse in the emergency department. A young Turkish woman came to the hospital and had pain in her lady parts where something was stuck in. So my friend and her colleagues started to check and were completely baffled. There was a soap dispenser upside down in her vagina with the opening facing downwards. The dispenser thingy had been removed. It needed to be cut out because the bottle had been grown together with the walls in her vagina. Turns out this thing was stuck inside her over half a year and parts of said walls were growing inside the opening. My friend also said it was the worst smell she ever witnessed since months of period blood and other body fluids had gathered on top of the bottle. They assumed that the patient couldn't remove it herself due to vacuum and was too afraid or embarrassed to come to the hospital earlier. I'm always amazed at the idea of your body growing around things. Like, we've all seen trees do it, but my body can do that with enough time and effort. Insanely crazy. Male patient came into the ED with chief complaint of foreign body x-rays had showed a martini glass with an orange in it in the rectum. His wife came in, hysterical, saying I can't believe he's doing this stuff, again. I work in the operating room and have a former life in trauma. I have seen many, many things I wish I hadn't. A brief synopsis of a couple. Rectum. Dang near killed M. Worked in a case where an elderly gentleman lost a humongous sweet potato up his rectum. Had to cut the guy open to get it out. Most memorable was talking to him pre-op and him just saying over and over. I can't stay overnight. My wife can't find out. Word from someone who has been woken up more times in the night than I would like to admit. If you are going to put something in your rectum that was not specifically designed to go there, think twice. Weigh how much pleasure you might get out of it against what it would be like to have to describe to multiple people why you had to go to the air. Had a newly married couple come in very embarrassed. They were vacationing and fooling around on their honeymoon and lost their vibrator. 
in the husband. Not too uncommon except this thing was huge, and still on. You could feel the vibration if you touched his pelvic bone which every resident in the hospital proceeded to come in and do. Young male presented with sepsis, blood infection. He was knocking on death's door when his friend dropped him off. Poor guy had put a glass coke bottle up his bum. Which I guess isn't too odd. The problem here is he lost it and tried to retrieve it with some sort of tool breaking it in the process. It severed his sigmoid colon, part of your large intestine closest to your anus, and leaked fecal contents into his pelvic cavity causing a severe infection. The general surgeon on call did a fantastic job creating a colostomy and cleaning him out but unfortunately the patient didn't survive. Guess this just turned into the bad butt stuff thread. Oh well. I'll save my other messed up stories for some other thread. TLDR. Don't put things up your butt that aren't meant to go there. There are plenty of commercial products. Or just use your own. Or another's. Anatomy. Not a doctor, but my grandpa, Rip Grandpa, was a heart surgeon and also in a doc for a while. He told me this story about his time in the air. Hungarian accent. So I vas there in the office, when a man came in with a look of absolute pain. I asked was wrong and he said it would be better discussed in private. It turned out that he caught his penis on his zipper. All I could do was give a good yank. Cue me cringing at the thought of that and grandpa with a big butt grin on his face. I love you grandpa. Back in 1972 I worked in ED and had a 5 year old boy come in with his 7 year old brother. Big brother tried to help little brother zip his pants up, but alas his penis got zipped up in the zipper. Little guy was beyond crying and big brother was feeling real bad about it. It still makes me cringe. And yes I have seen worse plus assisted in over 500 autopsies. It. People doing messed up crap to themselves because they're on drugs. People waiting too long to get help until it's dire. And people shoving stuff up their buttholes and or vaginas. Why did I read this thread in its entirety? Why? I heard a GP discuss his most unusual encounters in the emergency department and one of the things included people's fascination with pushing objects through orifices in their body, mainly their rectum but also included penile urethras and stomas. He showed an x-ray of the rectum with an orange and a coat hanger stuck while the guy tried to pull out the orange. Another was a doorknob, which the guy accidentally fell onto and his friend had to dislodge the entire door and bring him into ED with the door rested on his back. The GP said part of the struggle dealing with these fetishes was not to laugh. Not my story, but a former EMT firefighter friend of mine was called to a house where an older lady hasn't been answering calls or her door for about two weeks. After searching the house, they could smell someone was dead. They saw the ladder to the attic. He went up and saw she had been decomposing in hot, humid Georgia summer, in her attic after having a heart attack. We saw the same person come through emergency for facial burns three times in six weeks because they couldn't grasp the concept of not smoking while on oxygen. This occurred in SE Georgia. A woman called up the hospital and told the nurse, I've got lease in my vagina. I'm sorry, did you say that you had leaves in your vagina? Yes, I have leaves in my vagina. What kind of leaves? I don't know, green ones. Have you tried to brush them out? They are up in there. So the nurse has the woman come into the air to be seen by a doctor. She comes in, the doctor looks at the problem and the woman is sent into surgery for an emergency hysterectomy. Someone was taught to use a potato slice as birth control, but then forgot to remove the slice after having sex. Warm, dark, damp space is the perfect place to grow a potato plant, which is exactly why this woman had leaves in her vagina. This is all pretty disappointing really. All the years of warnings we received, the constant harping from our mothers, and not a single running with scissors story. That's because of the years of warnings. When I was a med student on trauma surgery, assisted a case for removal of a trichobazor, which is a hairball in the stomach. Nastiest smell ever. The surgeon had me take a picture of it after putting it back in a stomach shape. Imagine when you pull wet hair from the drain but infinitely worse. The lady had trichotillomania, which is a compulsive need to eat hair. It was a third surgery for the same reason. I have yet to see Rapunzel syndrome which is when there is hair from the stomach all the way to the colon. Trichotillomania is the compulsion to pull out one's hair, not eat it. Trichophagia is the disorder you are describing. 
also not a doctor but a medical technician. This definitely isn't as graphic as some of the other stories but the interesting thing is that it happened yesterday. We had a patient who was on a ladder. I believe he was trying to change a light bulb and fell off the ladder. He broke every single one of his ribs and gave himself a hemothorax. That's when blood gets into the pleural space making it difficult to breathe. He was rather young too. 40s to 50s. As soon as I read he fell off the ladder I was expecting the light bulb to have ended up in his rectum. My. Ex. Bill was doing his residency at the county hospital in Chicago. A homeless woman came in suffering from a bad infection. While examining her he did a gynecological exam. He was studying to be a gynecologist. He noticed something in her vagina, reached in and pulled out a few dollars in paper money at which point she started screaming at him to give it back, which he did. She'd hide her money in her vagina for safekeeping. So yeah, you don't know where that dollar in your pocket has been. Not a doctor but a nurse. During my surgery clinical we get an obese gentleman in for hernia surgery. The gentleman stands with his walker to transfer to the surgery table, gets put under and doc lifts the gown. This guy's scrotum were as big as a beach ball. No crap. The man's nuts were bigger than his chubby bald head. It took six hands to move his sack around to get him prepped for surgery. Doc removed 5-7 pounds of abdominal fat, pushed some of the amentum, the curtain of fat everyone has to protect their organs, and a loop of gut back up into abdomen. Then he gets rid of two football sized fluid sacks called hydrosols, then finishes trimming and tucking everything in. During the procedure the man's penis went from an invisible innie to actually a couple inches of flaxid hang. The doc doing the procedure was hilarious. At one point he handed me a large bowl of freshly removed fat and told, here miss student nurse, it's like play doh he also mused about whether he could bill insurance for penis enlargement. So men over it. The moral of the story is don't forget to do the turn your head and cough test on occasion and if you do have a hernia don't ignore it for 6 plus years. Not a doctor but I thought I should share. A few years back, my dad had a minor heart issue while running. He's fine. Anyway, we took him to the hospital a few days later to run some additional tests. So we're sitting in the lobby area and some guy comes through the front doors with a blue tea towel on his head, soaked in blood. He had little trickles of fresh blood dripping down his head. We stare at him for a bit until the receptionist asks him what's wrong. He says hi, I got the axe through my head again. My dad and I were trying to contain our laughter, wondering if we'd misheard him. When the receptionist picks up the phone, dials a number and says hey, Todd's here again. Yep, yep, the axe. Well send him in. She seemed so undisturbed by the incident. It was a little creepy. We saw him walk away but didn't see him again. Mother-in-law was a doctor. We asked her this one day. 99% of the time she wouldn't tell you anything. She was a good doctor a eh? Privilege. Etc. One day we got her drunk. That is. She had like 2 sips of wine and lost her crap. Loose lips sink ships. But all she'd tell us was one day the son of a huge celebrity. She wouldn't give any hints. At all. As to who. Came in. And he was something like 8 years old. And he had a crazy hard weird spot on his leg. There was a scar over top. Kid couldn't or wouldn't give any explanation except it hurt. And the celebrity wanted it taken care of right now. She was a great doctor. And accompanied them to the air. Uh, cause. That's where you go for insanity. Not your family doc. It was a dinky car, under the skin, wound or whatever healed over. Doctors are allowed to talk about patients as long as they don't mention names or identifying information. That's not breaking any rules. Not a doctor but a nurse. When I was still training we had a woman come in the year complaining of abdominal pain. After an x-ray they figured out what was wrong and the story came out. She had been masturbating with glass pop bottle and somehow lost it up there and then just forgot about it. That was a few days prior to her visit to the air. That same clinical rotation we had a guy come in with a foot wound so infected and cared for that when the nurse took his sock off maggots fell out. My mom is an NP and works in the air. One day she called me and told me how an old man was drunk and had put a zip tie around his penis and proceeded to tighten it as much as possible. I don't know what they did to fix it. I assume they cut the zip tie off but it makes you wonder. I saw some kid that was visibly in agony because there was a massive hole in his left hand. 
I'm talking about the palm. It was bleeding like crazy and he needed two other people to compress his hand completely. He couldn't even scream. All that I heard were gusps and pants like he was dying. Nightmares were had that night. When I was a medical student, I scrubbed an on a penectomy case. Yes, the removal of a penis. The guy had a gigantic, fungating, necrotic penile squamous cell cancer. I had never met him, but when he rolled back to the oar, he was still in the gown with a large bulky dressing on his penis. He kept telling us to be careful since his penis was so sore. Once he was intubated and anesthetized, we took off the dressing. I was in no way prepared for what I saw, and even less prepared for what I smelled. His dong was encompassed by this gigantic cantaloupe sized tumor that smelled like what I imagine the zombies on Walking Dead smell like. It was as if a skunk had died a year ago, been eaten by another skunk, reanimated, and crawled out of the butt of the skunk that ate it. We all dove for the bottle of oil off wintergreen, doused our masks with it, and breathed a shallow sigh of relief as my attending pointed at it and said that that is what denial looks like. The guy had clearly let this go for years before seeking care. Still by far the worst thing I've ever smelled. I will never forget it. Not my story but one I've been told from a nurse. A man came to the ER to get some narcs. He kept asking the nurse when he was going to see a doctor and she had said that there were patients who are more severe right now that take priority. Without a beat the man goes into the bathroom and cuts off his penis walks out to the nurse and puts it on her table and says can I see a doctor now and she just straight face said yup. Apparently every male doctor or nurse who went into his room after all came out looking like they had just seen a ghost. OHH man I've seen a lot. From things stuck in butts that are not supposed to be there, to tumors that eat half the patient's face, or a 20 kilogram abdominal tumor that has been growing for years. Many times I've seen infections gone out of control, where you can clearly tell this has been going on for months. For example, myosis. Maybe all of this is more of a how the frick did you let this happen. I have a lot of photos somewhere. Maybe I'll make an album sometime and do an AMA. I'm a surgeon BTW. My mill told me the story of a lady that had come in complaining of abdominal pain and smelling absolutely foul. Turns out she had tried using a potato as a sexual toy and was able to get it full inserted inside her vagina but couldn't pull it out. So she decided to leave it in there with the hopes that it would work its way out. It sprouted inside of her and then eventually started to rot. They had to surgically remove it. She also told me the story of a guy that had a surgery for something and while in recovery had asked her for some tampons. She was confused but gave him some anyway. Turns out he had so much rough gay sex that his sphincter no longer worked correctly and he used the tampons to keep his butt from leaking. Nurse here. Had a patient who scratched her eye with her nail and waited over a week to get care for it when it was clearly infected. Sore. Swollen. Red. Irritated. Pus. It looked so bad. She had to have her eyeball removed. Not a doctor or nurse, but I'm an EMT and I've worked in an ER. An elderly man was brought in from home. Dementia, Alzheimer's, and a bunch of other things as well. So he's bedridden. The stench when he was brought in was terrible. So I grabbed my trusty mini tub of Vicks Vapor Rub. Sneezy done under my nose and go to help clean this guy up and see what's going on. While cleaning him. We realize he's coated in dried hardened fesses. This wasn't the worst post though. As we were trying to clean the decal matter off of him, his skin was peeling away. It, don't stick anything but specifically designed dildos or your partner up in there. If it's discolored, leaking or stinks, go to the ear it's an infection and or gangrene. Stop doing weird crap with drugs and use clean equipment in the proper areas if you're gonna do it. Leave the penis alone. My mother-in-law is a paramedic who this year attended a scene where an older person has suffered a heart attack and passed away in their home, leaving two cute little poodles alone in the house. The neighbor called in with concerns that she hadn't seen or heard from the neighbor in a couple of days. When she arrived, the two cute little, now blood-stained, poodles had eaten the woman's entire arms up to the shoulder. Not a doctor, or anything like that, but maybe this fits. Long, long ago I was a submarine sailor. Henry had to spend 12 hours a day on lower level and guy room watch, because we were short-handed. But you don't get a lot of visitors in lower level engine room. Henry told us he was getting messages from God in the flow tones from the condensate pumps. 
In most environments this might be cause for concern, but submarines are not most environments. Also, as I said, we were short-handed. One day the voice and the flow tones told him he was supposed to have been Jewish. He attempted to circumcise himself with a pair of diagonal cutters, passed out before completion. Our doc, hospital corpsman, told us to talk it over with him prior to attempting self-surgery. This might get controversial, if I learned from previous Reddit experience relating this story. My mom is a nursing supervisor, they run the hospital and are at every hospital code. A 40 year old male came into the hospital with all the symptoms of a stoke, but he was deteriorating and desaturating crazy fast. He arrested shortly after desaturating and they couldn't revive him. After they did a post mortem. It was found that he bled out internally. When the family was questioned for the cause of the bilateral carotid dissection, they learned he had seen a chiropractor that day to receive a neck adjustment. His neck was moved incorrectly and both of his carotid, neck, arteries were torn. But my mom told me this story the morning after her shift and the way she said he just died right there was haunting. I've been told horror stories from the hospital all my life, but this is one that will remain as one of my mother's most gruesome tales from the hospital. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.